All right, we have yet another special one in for review today. This is not my Breitling Super Ocean. This is actually from a very generous and kind Instagram follower, friend, and also subscriber. You know who you are. I'm going to flash up his Instagram for you guys to definitely give him a follow. He is fellow. <laughs> fellow. Follow fellow. Uh, very, very nice guy. So what do we have here? Well, as I said, we have the Super Ocean 42 millimeters on the Breitling stock strap and this awesome buckle, which I'm actually going to start with because Breitling does an excellent job with their hardware. And when we take a look at it, everything just works flawlessly look at the buttons they're actually integrated into this clasp you got brightening there beautifully milled clasp and here is the party trick of the day guys check this out this is their easy adjust system i don't know what the proprietary name of this is but this is so easy to use like it's it's actually very very flawless I mean just boom super comfortable rubber strap here extra thick but very very pliable I mean you're not gonna have any problems this thing should outlast you uh, if brightening on the outside wasn't enough for you they have brightening brightling on the inside as well as you can see there case back nothing to write home about uh, brightling right there 1884 super ocean it is chronometer certified and there you go 500 meters of water resistance which equals 1615 feet 1650 feet <laughs> um that's not even dyslexia i don't even know what you call that but uh yeah so 1650 feet of water resistance right there guys this is a very clean dial. Uh, one of the more popular versions of this watch. They have the blue face and they have the orange, but I think this one here is the most popular. Because it's basically they're using negative space here. So they're using a lot of white here. And you've got the blue outlining everything here. Now when you take a close look at that handset, it almost looks like it's like a sandblasted. It's very rough textured. And that is done in blue. And I do love that red secondhand tip. It just kind of ties everything together. Um, you can notice the bluish tinge because Breitling has a tendency to do very, very good AR coating on the top and underneath the sapphire crystal. You can see there's a little bit of a dome there. Um, but no distortion at all from any angle and even when we have this in direct light you do not ne you'll never lose sight of this dial it never gets washed out because it just brightling just does fantastic job on the ar coating i wish that tudor did the same but as you can see with tudor there's plenty of reflections and whatnot and that's because they just do the underneath of the crystal this difference there's your difference between just underneath and top and bottom and i always prefer top and bottom now the drawback of having lou or the ar coating on the top is that it does have a tendency to scratch so in certain lights you may see some fine scratching now remember the handset well we have the same type of treatment with the bezel if we get in real close here i really like that because it's not going to scratch off and yet, it's going to be very durable. And it's got a very kind of, I don't want to say rugged look, but it just it has a, has a very distinct and unique look to it. Much better, once again, I hate to compare, but if we compare, we have paint here. So this, is, this can scratch. This is not going to scratch. So again, Breitling always thinks of ways of making their watch is durable typically they, they're very well known for their stainless steel bezels i mean i own one and uh, again no paint involved 
Now, you've got the stainless as the negative, negative space. And it's really nicely brushed. All the numbers, all the dashes here. And then we got a coin bezel on the bezel. Very good action, by the way. Brightling always has great action with their bezels. No, no backplay whatsoever. I mean, I can't, I can't get any backplay. Check that out. I mean, perfection. I like the crown guards. It protects the crown very nicely. Again, you got a nice coin bezel or coin edging on this crown. Now, getting to the crown is very simple and it will pop out just like that. First click, you can change the date. Second click, hacks the movement. There you go, hacks the movement. So this is your, I guess it didn't quite click out the way I thought it was because this is your first position. That is your second position right there. And then we can change the date. That actually changes at 12 o'clock, by the way. Very, very nicely done there. You know, I'm a sucker for that. Uh, that's just the kind of attention to detail that I appreciate from a watch company and then changing the date. Very solid clicks here. I'm going to put down on the bottom here what movement Breitling is using here, but rest assured, it's a really good movement. I'm also going to put this on the time graph and give you guys some specs on how well this movement is indeed running. Now, we have a very polished side profile, and then we have brushing on the top, and you can see that radial brushing right there. A little disappointed that there's no chamfered edge. Uh, Breitling doesn't do the chamfered edge. They just went right from polish to brushing there. I mean, it's not a deal breaker. Um, I don't even I don't even think I would even say it's a disappointment, um, but it's just, it's unusual. Let's just put it that way. It's unusual to see that. And then screwing the crown back in is very, very simple. Now, loom on this watch is absolutely superb. Um, there's absolutely no issue with that. Uh, you wouldn't think it taking a look at this because it looks like everything is just white. But you do get that C3 Super Luminova. And it just lasts throughout the night. No problem at all. You've got your Rehot right there. That just is not done in white as well. Very seamless. Gives that dial just a little bit of depth that it needs. The white itself is just really just a flat white. But it's so clean. Like there's just... Looking down at that dial, it just, it's a pleasure. It really is. And to see those numbers outlined like that, you know, it, I think it, they did a really nice job on that. It's just a very, very clean look. They're not trying to do too much here, but yet they did just enough to make this a really good looking, handsome watch. That's gonna be very durable. I mean, it's very practical to wear this on a daily basis. So, there you go, guys. There is the Breitling Super Ocean. Uh, but before I go, let me give you guys some measurements. As I said before, we're looking at a 42 case diameter. When I measured it out to the crown, I was looking at a 45.63, 13 and a half uh, millimeters in thickness. Lug to lug is not too bad at almost 50. We're looking at a 49.85 millimeters there. The strap, 20 millimeters, and it will taper down to 17.4 with the buckle bulging out to 22.95. That might bother some people, you know, um, with the because it looks a little, I guess to some people with ADD or obsessive OCD, I should say, um, that might look a little weird to people, but... Um, I'll show it to you on the wrist and I'll show you how that does look because um, I will assure you that it absolutely doesn't bug me at all. But I think when you don't look at it on the wrist, it may initially kind of put you off. So check this out. 
looks absolutely fine guys check that out doesn't look out of place and it works very well i love these pushers so easy it just the watch is seamless and there's a reason why this particular model is, is very popular amongst breitling enthusiasts so there you go guys this is my 50 cents i guess i don't have two cents here uh but you can keep the change thank you so much for joining me god bless and i'll see you guys next time on average Joe watch reviews bye now